Hi there, my name is Louis Taylor. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today we're going to be talking about counterpoint and I've got three tips for you on how you can use it to level up your compositions. What is counterpoint? Counterpoint is basically uh, a melody that contrasts with the initial original primary melody that you've written to add interest and character to the overall sound of the music. My three tips are essentially based around keeping it simple, using it for embellishment, and picking a moment. So let's jump into logic, have a little look at some examples, and we'll take it from there. The first thing that I would look into is just adding your own simple counter melody. So as you can see, I've got a logic file up from a project that I've recently been doing with Amazon Audible. Um, it's a episodic uh, audiobook series for children and um, I did some recordings with the Northern Film Orchestra and I've got some great sounds for you to show you. I've got some score to look at as well so that we can see what's going on musically. Um, so without further ado, let's take a little look at the first example. So, as you can see, there's quite a lot going on here, but it's overall a relatively simple composition. So, what we've got here is a simple melody. This... As, and so on and so on. And basically, what I've done here is added this little uh, oboe counter melody, just to add a little bit of complexity to the music, to kind of weave in there something that's going on. Now, in my head, I'm thinking this particular thing is this music is for some um, tailors. Okay, it's uh, there's some scheming sort of tailors. They're trying to fool somebody by making some clothes. So I'm kind of thinking of little themes weaving in and out as the sewing needle might do. So the music is kind of based around that. But this is pretty, you know, it, it's it's reproducible the sound and and I think that uh, the the general principle of just using a counter melody here is is definitely something that you can do in your own music. So and basically. One of the ways you can do that is by finding out what key of the music is. And once you've found out the key, think about the harmonic intervals that work with the melody notes. So something simple I just did, I mean, is basically play the melody on the piano, and for each note that I'm playing, let's say this uh, G here, I'm thinking what goes well with the G. And I'm playing this B flat here that comes... And then, you know, you play the D and it's still harmony. And then you go to this G flat again and you land on an E flat. And it's all nice, nice harmony. You've got a third, sixth and a fifth there. That's, there's nothing wrong with that. And that, in fact, those are pretty plain and simple harmonic intervals. So that's one thing to bear in mind. Keeping it nice and simple. Don't try too much adventure because otherwise it, it will contrast too much. It will become alien and, and it will also take over from the original melody, which you don't want to do. So, as you can see here though, that they're not the only notes that are going on. So to add a little bit of embellishment to that melody and to create a sort of counter melody rather than just harmony notes, because I've got plenty of harmony going on in the other parts of this composition. Um, to add to that, I've added passing notes in between, and that's kind of what makes up a melody. What you have normally in melody writing, uh, they kind of teach you that you have these basic notes per bar or half a bar that kind of make up the base structure of that melody. And in between those, you have different rhythmic values and different passing notes just to add unique uh, a taste of unique flavor, basically, to the melody, to make it a melody. That's kind of what stops it from being just notes and actually formulates it into a melody. So, uh, to add to that, it's the same principle with a counter melody, and just keeping it simple, da -na 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 -na, you know, you've got that, that nice upward line, and, and, and this leads on to a tip that I'm going to go into later, but as you can see here, you know, it's happening over a, a one note. You know, there's nothing crazy happening here. Like, like even here, there's a bit more going on. But I brought in the melody as the primary melody is holding on to a note and sustaining that. So that's basically that. 
and, and, and as you move forward, you can add more and more complexity. I mean, this is essentially just harmony right here, this one here. We've got um, these notes that are just falling down here in the flute, and uh, the same is happening in the oboe, but in, in the interval of a sixth. And it's, it's as simple as that, basically. So um, I can show you in the piano reel what that actually looks like, if that's a bit easier for you to read. Um, so that you can kind of grasp it, because I understand that some people don't read music. Uh, and if you're writing in Logic, you know, you might play in this melody here. Um, and you know what, it's probably worth just uh, showing you what that sounds like. So as you can see, it's very simple, basically just harmony, but there's rhythmic interest happening there too, and there's passing notes to stop it from just being harmony. So those are the two key factors that you need to think about, and and you should think about it. You know, really try and dissect what the melody's doing and line things up. Intentionally work out which notes work with the other notes that you've got already. Because if you don't do that intentionally, you might end up with something that sounds a little bit dissonant and not really... Um, very purposeful and clean. This is how you achieve that clean sound. Moving on, the next tip I've got for you is using counterpoint for embellishment and only embellishment. What do I mean by that? Embellishment is essentially a form of ornamentation. You're adding it to something that already exists. You know, you've got your house, you've got the structure of your house, and you're adding a, you know, I don't know, some flowers in there to make it look pretty. Um, it's as simple as that, basically. That's what embellishment is in music. You have your melody, you've got your harmony, you've got your bass line, but you might want to add a little f flourish here, or you might want to add a little trickling flute line or a little harp going up. These are all ornaments, but they can be used in a sort of counterpoint way, which just takes it from being a standard piece of embellishment to a form of counterpoint, in my opinion. So I'm just going to load up uh, a different logic file here which is for a different episode of the same project that I'm working on. Now, what I'd like to look at here is this little um, theme that I've got here. It's very simple, and there's a, a the melody is actually in the bass parts of the orchestra. I'm playing it in the cello, the bass, bass uh, bassoon, and bass clarinet. So um, I'm just going to play that for you, and then I'll dissect it a little bit. <laughs> So as you can hear there, we've got this little um, bass melody going on. This dum, da, 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 dum, da, dum, dum. Anyway, so that's happening, and it's very simple. There's not a whole lot else going on there. So in order to add a little bit of embellishment, a little bit of interest during the moments where the music kind of drops off a little bit, you know, in the silence, just to keep things going, I've got this little flute line here and this little oboe line. So let's just have a little listen to that. So as you can see, it's very simple. It's basically just... Dum, 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 which is very similar to what's happening here. Except that ba dum ba dum ba dum ba dum It's, it's, it's basically the inverted uh, rhythmic values of what's happening in the melody. So that's one way that it links in. So it's probably a good idea to link stuff. But also, it's um, it, it just adds a little bit of embellishment, basically. It's an ornament, ornamentation. Um, it's just a counterline. Uh, and it's not necessarily any complex counterpoint or anything, but it works harmonically. And it adds a little bit of movement during the, the, the moments of silence. So that's kind of what I mean by embellishment. You'll see in loads of film scores where there's a melody, a big soaring string line, the orchestra's going full pelt, and then suddenly, what would happen is basically nothing, and you need some connecting material between the two phrases, but there isn't anything. So what they have, sometimes, for example, if you've got these strings going nuts and the woodwinds are going crazy, you have the horns that go like, like that, into the second phrase, and it kind of just builds into it and keeps the music going at its lowest point, which is a really good way to sort of assist the overall momentum and professionalism, I would say, as well, of your music. 
Finally, let's move on to my last tip. The tip is pick your moment. Now, what do I mean by this? What I'm saying is you can't just put Cam's point willy-nilly and all over the place. What you need to do is, is decide exactly where you need to pick your moment. And the reason for this is that if you put it everywhere, your music will sound like chaos and you won't give any time for breathing. Your music needs time to breathe and you need time to establish the melody that you actually want people to hear. But in order for you to add all of these great bits of embellishment and these more complicated counter melodies, you need to pick your moment because otherwise it's, gonna, it's just going to sound nuts. It's going to be all over the place. So I'll show you a different, uh, a different piece where I've chosen specific moments for the counter the counterpoint to actually come in, um, and you, I think that you'll 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 see that with it in those specific places, it really adds to the overall momentum. But if I had it going throughout the section, it might sound a little bit overwhelming and just uh, too much going on. Okay, so we've loaded up the next. Uh example here and what we've got is basically a theme with some accompaniment in the strings the themes in the winds and what happens throughout that theme is as it develops and grows you have um, other instruments coming in with counter melodies that act as a sort of form of momentum it's kind of all three of the things that i'm talking about they're pinpoint that specific moment um, they embellish the music but they're also actual counter actual counterpoint that that actually adds interest and character to the to the whole composition so let's just have a little listen i'll uh, pull up the score and uh, you can see what i'm talking about so let me just grab the score okie dokes Counter melody is about to come in here in the clarinet and the violin. A little embellishment here in the bassoons. Clarinet taking over. Violin coming in. So as you can see, we have basically start with one melody. There's a little bit of embellishment counterline going on here in the clarinets and violins. And that leads to a f sort of the, the thing that I was talking about with the horns earlier. That's essentially what's going on in the bassoons here and the bass clarinet. We've got a bum 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 bum. It's a nice embellishing leading bass line. It leads you somewhere. It's not pointless. It, it, it adds a lot of momentum. It doesn't allow things to stop. So if you want things to stop, that's fine. But if you want things to keep going and you're thinking, oh, I wish this music had a bit more momentum, try something like that, a little leading line with a bit of character and a bit of pace to just blast you into the next section. And then as that happens, we have this nice line in the oboe. And as it, it comes to a sort of resolve, the clarinet helps that. It adds to the cadence with a bit of extra harmony and a nice warm sounding melody, which kind of goes contrary to the, uh, to the, to the oboe there, which is then... Uh, then you've got the violin one actually I forgot to mention coming in here um, which is essentially three part counterpoint now and as that violin comes in it eventually blends uh, here in bar 222 with the clarinet to become two part again because again you've got to keep things simple sometimes two th sometimes three part harmony just three part counterpoint is just not what you want sometimes it is but in this case, I only wanted it for two bars. And then I join them together so that things can resolve. But as we get to the last bar, I move the clarinet up to that A and the violin down to the F. So we have a nice triad happening here in the harmony. And that is a form of three-part counterpoint again. You've got three voices there. It starts with one, two comes in, three comes in, goes back to two, and then ends on three again where things spread out and that's nice that's how I liked it and that's what I wanted to do with that just for those of you who um, would probably rather see it in the piano reel I'll, I'll open that up to see what it looks like for you um, and I'll just make it much much bigger so uh, yeah we, we've got exactly the same thing one melody coming in here string accompaniment happening clarinet comes in goes here follows along with the recap of the melody with a little bit more harmony and then as we happen to get to here, the bassoon comes in, bum, 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 bum. And then the oboe takes over the line. It's a new melody. 
Clarinet comes back in, warms it, sort of rounds it. You've got this, this purple one here coming in. You've got the violin. But then they meet in the middle here because they end up at the same place. So I thought, well, they're ending up at the same place. So they may as well combine. So they go together in two-part counterpoint here and then expand out to three again here. So that's it. That's my three tips for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I'm really, really glad that uh, you stayed to the end if you did. I hope you found use from the video. Please subscribe and like if you like the video or don't, if it's up to you. I'd love it if you commented. I really love to receive your feedback and support. Uh, ding that notification bell so that you can be notified the next time I upload a video. And again, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye for now.